Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, March 26, 2015. Here's a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight, Alex Jones sets the record straight on Jade Helm. The average person is being compartmentalized, and this is about brainwashing the military and the public to accept this. We're giving you the Death Star plans. You understand? We're giving you every bit of it. All the facts, their own documents, all of it. All of it right here in this damn report. The New World Order isn't coming, it's here. The Redcoats ain't coming, they're here. They're here. Well, it's official. The U.S. military is getting ready to operate undetected amongst the civilian population. It's Operation Jade Helm, a so-called military exercise. And it's set to take place this summer in nine states, including right here in hostile Texas. It will involve the Green Berets, the Navy SEALs, and the 82nd Airborne. The Houston Chronicle is reporting that these soldiers will attempt to blend in with the population in an effort to test the effectiveness of their infiltration techniques. And residents will be asked to report suspicious activity during the exercise. This is very, very dangerous. This is how the Stasi got started, the secret police. And this is their game plan. They are going to set up undercover military cells in plain clothes to blend in with the civilian population. You're not going to recognize who they are because they're going to look like you. They're going to look like me. Might even have a beer with them. Now, this is directly involving unwitting members of the civilian population. 17 different cities here in Texas will see an army presence during the exercise. And don't forget that they said that Texas, Utah, and even portions of Southern California were hostile territories. And the U.S. Army has failed to acknowledge or failed to address why we're being called hostile but the exercise moves on, and it will take place this summer on the streets of America. Jade Helm troops to operate undetected amongst civilian population. And of course, the military people and the vets are not buying any of it. They're not stupid. You can read about how it's to get the hearts and minds and how to get the public used to working and, and the local police working with the military. I mean, everybody who's been in the military knows about the secret EOD program going on for 18 years. Their whole ordnance disposal, you know, quote, the army is going to show up to defuse a bomb. But then you get the internal agreements. It's for everything from warrant service to checkpoints with military personnel in nondescript blue jumpsuits, just like the Army Ranger called in and said they were wearing EPA blue jumpsuits. It's always blue or tan jumpsuits. And it might say EPA. It might say police. Uh, it might say park service. Training with the police, training with locals in plain clothes, quote, doing suspicious activities is to train the police to work with the military in covert operations and to condition the military to accept it and to condition the public to accept it. And then when we cover it and talk about it, they practice the PSYOP in real time, putting out this information. I can see the script from Army Times to military.com to Stars and Stripes to Bloomberg to Daily Beast to Vice to the Houston Chronicle and no exaggeration today. You go search Jade Helm. There are now hundreds of articles, and in almost all of them, yours truly is being demonized. Jones, who's warned of an imminent takeover for decades, keeps claiming it's going to happen. But of course, it never does. No, it never does. Checkpoints, TSA, open spying, uh, highway dividers being put up nationwide. Uh, open manuals that the number one enemy's veterans and gun owners and Christians. I mean, come on. This is the PSYOP. That's right. One big PSYOP. And I wanted to get Joe Biggs' take on all this. We got the Navy SEALs, the Green Berets, 82nd Airborne, all operating undercover within the civilian population. Why should we be concerned about that? Well, the, the biggest concern is the fact that, like we've said, it is a PSYOP. It is a... a a mission to help condition people to seeing the ground troops. But this, one of the scary things about it is, in Texas, a lot of people are gonna be armed. Regardless of the fact if, if we hadn't spoken about this, 
this might not be as big as it is. We probably helped save lives by doing this because just imagine being at home and hearing helicopters flying overhead and rounds being shot off, doors being kicked in. People are going to gra are going to grab their guns and do the the normal. And they're already warning people that that's what they could expect. Yeah. They're going to say they're going to hear loud noises. They're going to see suspicious activity. They're asking uh, civilians to report suspicious activity. And we're taking a lot of heat for this, just for reporting all, the, all this. You, in particular, they're really attacking you. The Stars and Stripes, mainstream media, the U.S. Army, just for reporting on this. I want to read to you a little bit what the Houston Chronicle said. They characterize our response to this drill as an example of ultra right-wing fears of a government takeover in the Lone Star State. They say that we are completely overreacting to all this. What do you say to that? Well, I don't think we're overreacting whatsoever. I think we are doing what we need to do to bring attention to this entire operation. Because like I said, if people aren't warned, they're going to have that natural reaction when they hear something like that. So I think we've actually done a service to the people to help bring attention to this and expose the fact that this will be going on. This will actually help uh, stop something from happening just so people can be aware of what's going on, don't you think? Well, exactly. And what about how they say that these exercises were meant for overseas operations? Uh, that, that's one thing that I think is the biggest load of, you know, crap in the whole thing, because we've seen time and time again, all these different urban warfare training centers yep. popping up, AP Hill, the one up in uh, North Carolina, the Marine Corps uses, churches, soccer fields, all this stuff. I mean, it's a load of BS. You train in an area that you're going to fight over in your theater of operation, and these places look more and more like urban America, and now they're moving off of a government installation that we spend, quite frankly, millions of dollars on taxpayer money to build these installations for the soldiers to train and fight or to train to go overseas for. Why do we now need to leave these government facilities that were spent and bought and paid for for that? Why do we have to bring that into our backyards? Why do we need to work with the civilian population and local law enforcement to get that training done? Because the times I was in, we just hire some people or you take another unit who's not training and you use, you use them as what's called op four. Those are the guys who play, play the bad guys. So you don't need to bring this kind of training into America's backyard. That's right. And we have leaked army documents, yeah. army training documents that make it perfectly clear that they plan at some point to have martial law right here in the continental United States. There's the leaked 2012 U.S. Army Military Police Training Manual, for example. It's entitled Civil Disturbance Operations. And in it, it describes how soldiers will be ordered to confiscate firearms and kill American dissidents. It says it right there in the Army Manual, folks. And it goes on to say that prisoners would be detained in temporary internment camps and re-educated to gain a new appreciation of U.S. policies. Wow. So what do you say, Biggs? Do you think you so and I need the, to be put in internment? We need to be re-educated on U.S. policies. So is, is that part of what the uh, the Hillary Clinton fun camps are for the adults or Maybe whatever? that's it. Maybe it's Maybe fun that's camps. how it's all rolling out. Jade Helm and then the Hillary Clinton fun camps at all. Well, it reminds me of George Orwell's 1984, all right? Uh, two plus two equals five. And let me tell you something, folks. 1984 wasn't written to be an instruction manual, but that's how these guys are taking it. They're taking it serious. Re-education uh, re camps, right? That sounds like something right out of the pages of an Orwellian nightmare. Do you think that they're really prepared to go through something like this? Well, they do re-education camps in a sense in the U.S. Army. When you fail to obey their orders, you decide to think outside the box and actually be a human being who makes his own decisions you will be removed from a training facility and then taken to a re-education type uh, tent where they kind of hammer down these basics about how you don't need to be thinking, uh, just listen to what you're told, react to what we say, and do that. So that's a lot of things that they use in training in the military already. So I don't see how it would be that difficult for them to, in turn, use that on the civilian population. Well, it doesn't sound like any kind of fun. And we're going to have more on Operation Jade Helm. Later in the broadcast, Alex Jones is filing a report. You're going to see that later at the end of the broadcast. But right now, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about, I almost called him Sergeant. Uh, he doesn't deserve that title. Yeah, Bo not... Bergdahl, the deserter, what's the latest on him? Well, yesterday we found out that he will be given the charge of desertion and misbehaving before the enemy. Now, Good. what these two charges mean, if he gets charged with it at a, a court-martial level, 
is that he could spend to the rest of his life in prison on these charges alone. Now, a lot of people on social media are going around calling for a death penalty, things like that. Now, that can only happen if we have declared war, which we didn't. This is more like a police action, like in Vietnam. So that can happen. But what can happen is if they find out without a shadow of a doubt that soldiers, the six soldiers that did die, that they say right now died looking for him, if they can prove without a shadow of a doubt that a soldier died on a mission actually looking for Bo Bergdahl, then he could possibly be given the death penalty at that point in time. But the big thing is the cover-up behind the Obama administration, the lies to get this man and essentially Well, that's what I want to hear him. about. I want to hear about the prisoner swap. What's up with the prisoners? Where are they right now? Are they a threat? Uh, what's the deal? All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a, a look at that video right now, which is going to dismantle the Obama administration's lies about essentially what happened with this entire Bo Bergdahl swap. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now, we now know that Bo Bergdahl has been charged with desertion and misbehaving before the enemy. Now, if convicted at a court-martial, Bo could serve up to life in prison. Now, a lot of people are saying that Bo should get the death penalty for this desertion charge, but... For something like that to happen, we would have had to have been in a declared war with Afghanistan, which we are not. Now, there is a possibility that Bo could get the death penalty if he is deemed responsible for the loss of life in uh, one of the six soldiers who died uh, while supposedly looking for Bo Bergdahl for a long period of time. So until that is proven without, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, then that won't happen. But if something like that does get proven and there is proof that a soldier did lose his life while on a mission that was specifically looking for Bo Bergdahl, then he could possibly face a death penalty. He was looking for someone who spoke English so he could talk to the Taliban. And when we heard that, it told us, okay, he's actively seeking out the Taliban. Over the next couple months, uh, all the attacks definitely were far more directed. Following his disappearance, IED started going off directly under the trucks. They were getting perfect hits every time. Their ambushes were very calculated, very methodical, like they knew what we were gonna do. Now the big question though is, should President Obama be blamed for this? And the answer quite frankly is yes, he should be blamed for this. Why did they make the soldiers in Bergdahl's unit sign these non-disclosure agreements if he was a hero, if there was nothing to hide about this? This is another Obama deception. You and lots of other soldiers signed a non-disclosure agreement uh, with the military. I've really never heard of anything like this happening on such a widespread scale uh, for regular Joes uh, as opposed to special forces. Um, are you worried now that the military is going to try to punish you for talking? I mean, uh, it's certainly a possibility, um, but I don't think that I could have uh, continued to go on uh, without being able to share with you and, uh, you know, the people uh, the true things that happen in this uh, situation, because if you guys aren't made aware of it, um, it, it'll just go on. He'll be a hero and, and nobody's going to be able to know the truth. I mean, you mean to tell me that this entire time while they were making this trade with five top Taliban insurgents for Bo Bergdahl, that the president didn't have any ounce of a clue about Bo's past and his mishaps in his unit, the times that he's tried to leave, the things that he said. We heard from our interpreter that the American that was walking around in the Afghan village looking for somebody that spoke English and water also wanted to seek out the Taliban. Because I find that very hard to believe seeing that in June of 2012, Michael Hastings had come to that exact same conclusion that Bo was acting that way, that he was a very young, confused man in his Rolling Stone article, America's Last Prisoner of War. I think this is the most significant and undercovered story about the war in Afghanistan from an American perspective. It's a story about the only prisoner of war. Under normal circumstances, uh, he would be a cause celebre everywhere. But because of the nature of why he left and, why he got, and how he got captured, he, he's been sort of buried. The Pentagon has intentionally sort of buried his case for, for a variety of reasons. I just think it's a little shady that the president is going to act like he didn't know that and he made these decisions based off the fact that he was just trying to bring another hero home. Now, the president bypassed Congress because he knew they knew about Bo. That's why he snuck past Congress. Then he used the leave no man behind slogan. Because the United States of America does not ever 
leave our men and women in uniform behind. Essentially to make Congress look bad because, hey, this guy's a hero. We need to bring him home. It's okay if we trade these five top Taliban leaders for him. Congress, you guys are, you know, a bunch of a-holes for not supporting this. Sergeant Bergdahl wasn't a, simply a hostage. He was an American prisoner of war captured on the battlefield. He served the United States with honor and distinction. The reason Congress and Congress didn't want to support it is because they knew all they had to do was read the Rolling Stone article. All they had to do was look at his past and find out that he was the kind of guy who would do something like this. Now, if Bo has a Congressional Medal of Honor, then I'm pretty sure Congress would have been like, yeah, that's fine. We'll approve this Taliban 5 swap. But Bo wasn't. And Congress knew that he was a traitor. And that's why they wouldn't back it. And that's why President had to go behind their back and sneak in for this trade to get these guys. So the question is, should the President be held accountable for this? Should he be the one who gets in trouble for these actions, for trading a traitor for top five Taliban leaders who will, some have said have gone back into the ranks of ISIS and are now fighting people again? InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit suit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new ancient defense herbal immunity blend crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. This is an emergency broadcast. This is a direct message to the Department of Defense, all four branches of the military, active duty, service members, veterans, their families, state governments, local governments, and the media. We are going to display 100% irrevocable proof that there is a global move, not just here, but all over the world, to militarize police and to put standing armies on the streets to suppress the population and to carry out political operations. They have recruited in the last decade clergy response teams, preachers to spy on their flocks and to order their flocks to turn in their guns and go to FEMA camps during civil emergencies. The primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with and then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. In a lot of cases, these clergy would already be known in the neighborhoods in which they're helping to defuse that situation. For the clergy, one of the biggest tools that they will have in helping calm the public down or obey the law is the Bible itself. 
specifically Romans. We have seen gun confiscation during emergencies in Canada and the United States, during flooding, going into high and dry areas and taking guns, beta testing if troops would follow the orders. This is part of a long-term societal slide. We're not becoming a police state. We're not in danger of being under globalist rule. We're already here. The president opens the borders without any law, shuts down power plants without any law. The FCC refuses to testify and seizes the internet. Obamacare has death panels. Veterans are put on no-treat death list. By every historical measurement, we're already in a tyranny. And then Operation Jade Helm gets announced. It was put on the Army website last week. We reported on it first. It became a big, huge national news story. They've had Army Times, Stars and Stripes, hundreds of newspapers come out and say, Jones said that the military would take over and have martial law for Obama this summer. Not what we said. We said Jade Helm infiltrating police departments, practicing taking over America, uh, interfacing to condition the public, was part of a long-term strategic plan to sell the military on this new unconstitutional mission. If we're against transvestites in special forces dressed like women, it isn't because we're against the military, it's because it will wreck the military. But they pose it like, you're against the troops because you don't want trannies in commando gear. Or, you're against the troops because you don't want them training in your city. Yes, because military and police exposed this to me back in the 90s. I interviewed the San Antonio police chief and others, how Delta Force came to them. It made the Associated Press my interview and said, we want to pay you $200,000 to work in covert operations to compromise him. That's what this 10-state operation, it was eight states, is all about, is finding out who will work with them during a martial law takeover. Most of the military is not involved in this. Notice that special operations, Navy SEALs, Green Berets, Delta Force, and others that are running this because they're the ones, historically, that I've run up against doing this. They act like it's a detriment that I've been warning of this for 20 years in the Houston Chronicle. They say decades. It all came true. We're already in the police state. We're already going under a form of martial law. So let me show you some of the news we already went to in our earlier report, then I'll go to a smattering of the other evidence right here, much of it from the Department of Defense's own website. You have massive military gear being cached, armored vehicles, machine guns, helicopters, night vision, Humvees, with the police departments around the country. California has gotten the majority of it, uh, along with Oklahoma and other areas to population. Texas has gotten double what California's gotten. We have 10 million less than them. Oklahoma got basically double what California got, even though the crime rates are very low because it's about suppressing the patriot population just like they have on the map in Jade Helm showing Texas, Utah, and other areas as hostile. This is pre-caching to fight real Americans that won't go along with gun confiscation, you name it. Now, when you see Infowars.com articles I'm going to show you, you can go directly to the site, click on it, and go to the Department of Defense's site. DOD training manual, extremist founding fathers would not be welcome in today's military. Close quote. Army-sponsored report suggests new police force. That's World Net Daily. What's that out of? A stability police force for the United States, RAND Corporation. This is the martial law plan that I've been covering for 18 years. War gear flows to police departments, New York Times. Feds preparing to invade Texas, list state as hostile. They are preparing, not saying they're going to invade or take over. They are preparing for the takeover. And that's in the John Warren Defense Authorization Act of 96, 97. They admit for insurrection by legislatures and governors. They just hope, just like Obamacare, you don't actually go read this stuff. Now, here it is out of the Army Times. Conspiracy groups question Southcom's mission in Texas. They even try to deny it's even going on. Defense Department guide calls founding fathers extremists. Fusion centers expand criteria to identify militia members, tracking the American people. U.S. military to assist in Vancouver. Again, this is years ago. Our military being used in Canada because under these deals, and Paul Watson's doing an article on this, the generals admit they're training to bring in foreign troops to suppress insurrection. I'm going to go to that in a moment. Look at this in the New York Times. 
scouts trained to fight terrorists, and more. Disgruntled veterans, read it for yourself. Gun owners, that's who they train nationwide to fight. Wellness checks is code for gun confiscation. Now have National Guard going door to door asking to, quote, see your guns, just like the police knock and talk, where they come and ask to come see your guns when they're legal. Troops in door to door wellness checks in Virginia, Ohio. And remember what we saw happen in Katrina. So that's just some of what we've covered to recap that it's a compendium. It, it's, it's the body of what's going on. It's the frog in the pot where it's done incrementally so that people become accustomed. And they admit in the Jade Helm report that it's about interfacing with the public and local police. It's a PSYOP. Now, let's go directly to the massive documentation. I'm just going to show you all these exhibits. And again, the Pentagon counters saying, oh, look, it's InfoWars. These articles all link directly to the article below, which is army.mil. Yes, the re-education camp manual does apply domestically to U.S. citizens. Three years ago in 2012, they started massive advertising for career specialists in the U.S. to run, quote, re-education camps. They even used the communist Soviet term. You cannot make this up. It, it's like the Nazis didn't call their death camps death camps. This would be like them actually calling them death camps, to call them re-education camps, because that's a Soviet term for a torture, uh, basically death camp. So in the Soviet re-education term, re-education is death camp. You cannot make this up. They actually use that term. It has the social security numbers, how to process everybody, how to break up the families. We've even filmed the drills, not just the manuals. And they counter and go, oh, it's for overseas. No, it, it talks about working with local law enforcement, social security numbers, and how the Constitution is suspended. Read it. Now, this is two articles out of about 150. Let's, let's keep moving here. This is directly for the Department of Defense, okay? Let's continue here. National Guard looking for internment resettlement specialist. Okay? Mainstream news. Here is the actual document, FM 3-39.40, internment resettlement operations. And it all has dual use overseas, but it says specifically for the U.S. CFR proposes using Army to enforce domestic law. Go read their full report calling for the RAND Corporation plan to be implemented. That's from 2012. And you've got military drills in every city, every state, where they actually start arresting people, like up in St. Louis two years ago, East St. Louis. Uh, U.S. Army, in a time of transition, foreign affairs moving to control the U.S., and then NATO has contingents of our Army and military inside of it. So the U.S. only gets to police itself under the U.N. treaties, State Department Memorandum 7277. So it's a 1963 plan. It's finally being implemented. This is the global government plan. That's why they're power grabbing everything outside of law now and outside of Congress because they're claiming they can do it through treaty and that's how the president's doing it. We're going into global government right now. Uh, let's continue here. KBR awarded Homeland Security contract, Wall Street Journal, $385 million to build FEMA camps. Wall Street Journal. Let's continue. Full spectrum operations in the homeland, a vision of the future. You get into these uh, Army War College reports and others, it talks about engaging the Tea Party. And of course, we can show you on screen, uh, Forbes and others saying how the Army would crush a Tea Party rebellion. Let's put that on screen. Uh, Ohio National Guard portrayed gun rights supporters as domestic terrorists during drill. Riot control, DHS spends 500,000 on fully automatic pepper spray launchers. That's nothing. Uh, Homeland Security, International Business Times, refutes conspiracies about 1.6 billion ammo. And then they go on to say, oh, we're not buying it for you and it's not unusual. It's now up to 3 billion rounds. And paper targets of children and women is what Homeland Security requested. Military says no presidential authorization needed to quell civil disturbances. Go read that report. And then they try to deny that's what this is all about. SEAL veteran, military leaders being asked if they will disarm veterans. Benjamin Smith, highly decorated Navy SEAL. Boom. Talking to top generals. Let's continue. Going to listen to believe him or are you going to believe the globalist? Okay? Going to believe the four films I've made with the footage of it or are you going to believe these fairy tales? Homeland Security Report lists liberty lovers as terrorists. This got picked up by Fox News. And it lists uh, uh, Tea Party as terrorists and tells the military you can't be part of it or you'll be given a court martial. That's like saying you can't be part of the Baptist church. Oh, and they did that too. They said, if you're part of any evangelical church, we'll court-martial you. 
Uh, let's continue. Army strategic shock report says troops may be needed to quell civil unrest. Known unknowns, unconventional strategic shock in defense strategy development. Go read it for yourself. I mean, they think you're stupid and won't go look all this up. Police now armed for war against returning veterans. We have three different videos in these articles of police chiefs and SWAT team commanders saying, we have MRAPs to fight the Tea Party and gun owners. We have it from Illinois to Washington State, from Texas to New York. These people saying, we got this to fight the Patriots. And Homeland Security has defended in the Washington Post, saying their main threat is domestic Patriot groups. And Napolitano, before she left, came out and said, I defend that we say that's the number one enemy. But, but then they say, oh, we're not building all this up for you. We're not, it's not for you. It's not for you. When I was told all this by the police chief of San Antonio in the late 90s and interviewed him for an hour. The interview's online. And emergency managers, they came in and said, if you'll go along with gun confiscation, we'll give you $200,000. Delta Force. Clinton tried this before, and we blew his operation to hell with the info. And I didn't do it. The military did it. So this is not anti-military. This is rallying the patriots to understand what's happening. So you go ahead and demonize me, and government, you want to kill me? Go ahead. I will die a patriot that didn't sell my country out, you pieces of trash. And I don't want to hear the people leaking this info are traitors. You're the traitors that are part of this. Cowards. Armed for war, Pentagon surplus gives local police an edge. Fox. DHS wants equipment for riot situations. Pentagon to detail troops to bolster domestic security. Washington Post. It's for America, and it's not the borders wide open. It's not for security. They'll have a few missions on the news that look reasonable, giving kids food, putting out fires, but the real mission in their own documents is to take us on. And man, they're gearing up, folks. It's like Manhattan Project squared, how big it is. And it's happening right in plain view. And they think you're too stupid to figure it out. Marine Corps Colonel, Homeland Security Building Domestic Army. We've had that colonel on the show, highly decorated. New Hampshire City wants a tank to use against occupiers and libertarians. Mainstream news. Homeland Security enlists clergy to quell public unrest if martial law ever declared. They tried to recruit my dad and every dentist he basically knows to be tattletales. He said against two, and they said, just against, you know, the libertarians, the right-wingers. We just want to... We just want to, you know, keep watch your patients for us. And a lot of the dentists were like, what is this, the Soviet Union? Secret FEMA plan to use pastors as pacifiers in preparation for martial law. We broke this. Look, we broke this in 2006. A year later, it came out on mainstream news. You see that? You see that? 2007, 2006. We broke it. We broke it. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you, man. People say, well, I don't see newsmen get, get excited. I'm not a newsman. I am a defender of this republic, a modern Paul Revere, just like you should be. Okay? This is teleprompter free. This is research. This is my heart. This is real. I've had them try to set me up and set fires in Florida when I was covering this, try to put me in prison. Made a film about it. Police State 2, the takeover. I've had them put guns, point guns at me. I've dealt with this. I've lived them trying to set me up. I've had MSNBC come out and say I was involved in the Boston bombing with no proof. I know, ladies and gentlemen, at many levels, I'm as good as dead. I've lived it. I know it's real. I don't even need to have their own documents. I've seen it. So here, we'll see if the truth can trump the Pentagon PSYOP, because this is the truth right here. Because you want to have your cake and eat it too. You want to roll all this out like it's no big deal in the news. If the troops think it's normal, then we pop up and say, no, it's part of a larger plan. You go, oh, none of this is happening. Sorry. Sorry, we've got all of it right here. From your mouth most of the time. Black Ops helicopters buzz Kentucky residents, part of the conditioning program. Yes, those were black helicopters. Black Ops helicopters, over, I thought they didn't exist. Remember that 15 years ago? They didn't, now, now it does. Black helicopters descend on Dallas. U.S. Army training in St. Louis, city streets. Fox, don't be alarmed. Army trains MPs to drive tanks on U.S. streets. Fully armed U.S. troops patrol Minnesota neighborhood. Local Guard personnel to conduct exercises this week. Troops participate storming university. Florida residents report mysterious black military aircraft. Military training exercises keep some U.S. Floridans awake. Blah, blah, blah. I remember under Clinton, because this has been going on a long time, Hobbs Middle School, Pensacola. They had the Marines come in, aim guns at them, and say, this is martial law. They did it all over the country. So, 
In closing, ladies and gentlemen, I need everybody, every info warrior out there watching to get this video from the radio slash TV show that we're gonna post on YouTube and other globalist platforms. And I need you to send it out on every platform you've got and to hammer not just the Pentagon, not just the Army, the Marines, the Air Force, the Delta Force, Special Operations, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, but Camp Mabry, Camp Swift, every camp around you, every military base around you, hammer their email, hammer them, hammer them with this, because the average person is being compartmentalized, and this is about brainwashing the military and the public to accept this. We're giving you the Death Star plans. You understand? We're giving you every bit of it. All the facts, their own documents, all of it. All of it right here in this damn report. The, the New World Order isn't coming, it's here. The Redcoats ain't coming, they're here. They're here. They know a big frontal assault, you stand up to it like Paul Revere, so they do it incrementally. I'm coming over to that camera to talk to people right now. Folks, you're told you're supposed to get excited about a bunch of garbage. You're told you're supposed to get excited a bunch about, about a bunch of mindless crap about football games, you're supposed to get excited about freedom and tyranny and stopping it. That's what these genes are about. That's what resistance is about. And it's happening right now. I don't even know what to say at this point anymore. It just makes me sick to see the fall of this country and to see the tyranny and the, and, and the illegal NSA spying and all the rest of it. And I just think about all the veterans that have fought and died for our supposed freedoms and how we're pissing on their graves right now, and I'm tired of it. I'm signing off, ladies and gentlemen. I'm done breaking it down. I've done the best job I can. And it's up to you if you want to be slaves or not. They're going to take all of our freedoms for a reason. They're gutting us to make us poor to politically control us. It's called Cloward and Piven. And it's real. And going along with this is the surest way to be slaves. So get this report out to everybody where the facts are there. And Paul Watson's report as well, that details all of this. The anatomy of the American coup, how this country got taken over, and the facts. And hopefully the American spirit, the sleeping giant, can be awakened to outrage to break the trance and say no to the slow motion Red Dawn takeover. All right, that's it for this special transmission. I'm gonna throw this back to David Knight and the Infowars.com studios after this short break. And the rest is up to you, my friends. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're well, here in a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite.
Good evening. The parents of kidnapped Patricia Hurst today heard directly from their daughter for the first time since her abduction. As a member of the notorious Symbionese Liberation Army, Sarah Jane Olson, formerly Kathleen Ann Salaya, was partly responsible for the death of Myrna Opsel, the 42-year-old mother of four children who was in the bank to deposit receipts from her church during a bank robbery near Sacramento, California on April 21, 1975. Patty Hearst, who was acting as the getaway driver, gave information that led the police to implicate the SLA in the robbery and murder. Hearst also stated that Celia was one of the actual robbers. And according to Patty Hearst, Celia also kicked a pregnant teller in the abdomen, leading to a miscarriage. On August 21, 1975, the LAPD discovered several bombs attached to the bottom of their cars. Celia was accused of planting the bombs in an attempt to avenge the SLA members who had died a year earlier in a standoff with the LAPD. In February 1976, a grand jury indicted Celia in the bombing case. Celia disappeared and became a fugitive for 23 years. In 1999, Celia was profiled on the America's Most Wanted television program. After a tip came in, she was arrested on June 16, 1999. Celia was then charged with conspiracy to commit murder, possession of explosives, and attempting to ignite explosives with intent to murder. Shortly after her arrest, Celia legally changed her name to her alias, Sarah Jane Olson. After serving seven years, about half of her sentence, Olson was released from prison on March 17, 2009. This legendary domestic terrorist was allowed to go through the TSA's ultra-secure expedited pre-check system. A TSA supervisor failed to reject the quintessential example of a domestic terrorist as defined by the highest standards of the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, we talked about this whistleblower who said uh, they saw uh, and knew someone uh, in line uh, that was a domestic terrorist, had a conviction, went to jail. Back in 2008, I believe, we started training our TSOs in critical thinking skills. According to our investigation, the supervisor ordered that person to uh, go through the pre-check lane. So basically, we let a domestic terrorist uh, get on a plane. Olson never applied for a pre-check and would have been ineligible had she done so. So how did she get pre-check status without applying. Listen to this pre-check traveler. It just, it just showed up on your ticket. Yeah, it just showed up on my ticket. With a budget of $7.39 billion and an average failure rate of 70%, not only are the TSA stealing from passengers, declaring four-year-olds high security threats, and declaring themselves God. A TSA agent was arrested on January 3rd here at Terminal 1 at LAX. He'd just gotten off duty and was behaving erratically, saying, I am God, I'm in charge. But they can't even stop a legendary domestic terrorist from getting preferential treatment. It's blatantly obvious. The TSA has nothing to do with protecting travelers from terrorists. The majority of TSA agents have no clue that they are really just pawns in a giant security theater psyop. The National Consortium for the Study of Terrorism and Responses to Terrorism, a University of Maryland project funded by the Department of Homeland Security, has designated the so-called sovereign citizen movement as the number one domestic terrorist threat in America. The report takes its definitions from a 2011 study entitled Profiles of Perpetrators of Terrorism, in which the following characteristics are used to identify terrorists. Americans who believe their way of life is under attack. Americans who are fiercely nationalistic as opposed to universal and international in orientation. People who consider themselves anti-global, presumably those who are wary of the loss of American sovereignty. Americans who are suspicious of centralized federal authority. Americans who are reverent of individual liberty. People who believe in conspiracy theories that involve grave threat to national sovereignty and or personal liberty. Or, in a nutshell, concerned Americans. No different than the Puritans that embarked on the Great Migration to exercise rights endowed by their creator. 
with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. John Bound for InfoWars.com. All right, folks, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock p.m. Central. Until then, have a blessed evening. We'll see you back right here tomorrow night. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.